welcome to the Church of St John the Baptist in Morton for the Ringston in Avond Ash Wednesday Eucharist. This year, uh, as uh, much of last year was, is going to be quite different. Um, we cannot have people uh, social distance within church and do the imposition of ashes. So what we're doing this evening is, uh, if you have your ash at home, if you've uh, taken your palm crosses from last year and have uh, burned them down, there will be the opportunity for you to administer the mark of the cross on your own forehead uh, when we come to that part of the service. I'm joined this evening by Diane, our church warden here at Morton, and because we can't physically touch, I will be sprinkling the ash onto Diane's forehead and then making the sign of the cross on my own forehead. If you don't have ash, um, you can just make the sign of the cross using your thumb. The symbol of the cross is the ash is purely symbolic. Um, so you can do any of those things. And so we meet this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days Christians have observed with great devotion this time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel and so grow in faith and devotion to our Lord. I invite you therefore in the name of the Church to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. And so let us pray for grace to keep the Lent faithful. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Diane is now going to bring us our readings. First reading is a reading from Isaiah chapter 58. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. It's such the fast that I choose a day of humble to humble oneself. It is to bow down, to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to lie in sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose? To lose the bonds of injustice? To undo the thongs of the yoke and to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. It is not your share 
your bread with the hungry. Is it not your share, your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless and poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. The light, then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall rise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Corinthians 2. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin. He made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteous of God. As we work together with him, We urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity and knowledge and patience and kindness, holiness of the Spirit and genuine love and truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and in dishonour, in repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God, O that today you would listen to his voice. Pardon not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, 
so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not know your do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go to your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust, rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O God. And so may I speak in the name of the living, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. This morning we started our Lent course. It's based on this book by Hannah Steele. It's called Living His Story. We're talking about evangelism in this course, sharing the good news of our faith with other people. And in this morning's meeting on Zoom, uh, it became quite clear that some people are far more outgoing than others. Some are more confident than others, especially when speaking about their faith. Some people prefer to be more private about their faith, more reserved in their ways. And for them, today's gospel may come as a bit of a relief. A relief because it warns about practising one's piety before others in order to be seen by them. Piety is one of those words that's often associated with negative connotations. Pious, perhaps seen as superior or judgmental. But actually, one of the definitions is the quality of being religious or reverent. So, not at all negative. Some of us can be a little reluctant to show signs of piety in front of others, especially when we're outside of the church building, when we're not in the place where we normally worship and where we're surrounded by people who we think share some of the same ideas as us. If you ever fancy getting some strange looks, I suggest you try reading your Bible in, on public transport, or pray aloud perhaps in a restaurant or talk about what Jesus means to you, to the person sitting next to you while you're waiting for the bus or the train, or at the supermarket checkout. Just do one of those things and watch the faces of the people around you. I used to be a member of the Christian Motorcyclist Association and would regularly pray the grace before sharing a meal in a cafe or in a restaurant. And the Bibles that we gave them were called the Manual for Life. This is one of them, and it doesn't look like a Bible, it's got pictures of motorbikes on it. Um, it's specifically designed not to look like a Bible, so that people who were perhaps um, a little new in their faith uh, would feel more comfortable reading it in public without attracting those looks. So a Gospel lesson in which Jesus says it's better to practice your religious duties in secret may bring a sigh of relief to some people. But why the sudden uh, emphasis on secrecy today? On the one day of the year when we would normally receive a, vis a visible mark, the imposition of ashes, a cross on our forehead, something that unmistakably says something different is going on here. So I wonder, are we trying to show something or are we not? And if so, who are we trying to show it to? Well, we're certainly not trying to show God anything by wearing ash on our forehead. 
in the passage from Isaiah 58 that uh, Diane just read to us, it clearly says that sackcloth and ashes are not what God requires of us. And rather than sitting around looking miserable, God wants us to get on and do something, something worthwhile. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, home the homeless, give to the poor, change the world. That's the kind of religious offering that is required of us, to join in with God's work in his world. And Jesus speaks of wanting to see actions too. His message to us today is about practising our faith, linking our spiritual lives to action through almsgiving, giving money for the care of people, and through prayer and through fasting. It's interesting that Jesus assumes that his followers already do these three things, because he says, when you give alms, when you pray, when you fast, not if you do. Living our spirituality out through our actions is an important way to respond to God's love for us. So why does Jesus say, beware of practicing your piety before others? I think there are two things. One is that we can very easily become motivated and misled by concerns over who's watching us and what, watching what it is that we're doing. And secondly, we can find ourselves, sometimes unwittingly, looking for reward for what we do. Other people noticing us isn't in itself wrong if we're acting for the right reasons. If we're doing God's work in his world to leave the suffering of others, then we're acting well. And if others can see the good that we do because of our faith, then it can be a powerful witness to God's compassion, mercy and love. But if we're motivated by people, by being noticed by people and rewarded by people, if we're motivated by our ego, then our passage tells us that this will be our only reward. So why do we wear the ashes on our foreheads today? If they're not required by God and they're not about being noticed by others, then why do something so visible and so exterior? Ashes for us today are a reminder of humility and honesty. Sometimes we can get confused about what true humility is. It's not about putting ourselves down or asking how can God love someone as worthless as me or thinking God couldn't possibly love me, I'm just dead. It's not about that. True humility is about looking at what is real. Humility is about being grounded in the truth of who we are. We're finite. We don't live forever. We are flawed. We're dependent on God. We're completely loved by God. And we're forgiven and known as his children. And so as we begin our Lenten journey, ashes are a sign of penitence. They're a sign of our mortality. They're the truth of who we are. And as we journey through Lent, seeking truth about ourselves, we're all invited to spend time thinking about ourselves. And we're safe in the knowledge that we are truly loved by God. We can ask ourselves during Lent those difficult but really important questions. Are we sometimes motivated and misled by concerns about who's watching us and what they think and what we're doing? Do we find ourselves looking for earthly rewards for what we do? I pray that during this Lent we will find the honesty and the humility to seek and accept the answers to these questions for ourselves. Amen. So let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of others. 
Lord, have mercy. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbours, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favourably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us, with all your saints, to the joy of his resurrection. We pray together. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to receive the ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep this season of Lent. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ our Saviour. And so, if you are at home and you have ashes, I now invite you to make the sign of the cross in ash on your forehead. Or perhaps you might like to just make the sign of the cross using your thumb. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. So let us pray. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And I invite you to stand for the peace. 
Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Merciful Father, turn us from sin to faithfulness and from disobedience to love and prepare us to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ our Saviour, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine out may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. supper was ended. He took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. 
bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St John the Baptist, St Andrew and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be. The body of Christ is broken for all. shed for all. Amen.
So let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly love. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these his inestimable, inestimable gifts and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We, we pray together. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I invite you to stand as we prepare to receive God's blessing. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.